Today, the new X B2 Plus. But before we go into details, uh, let's check it out uh, in a couple of clips from a track I did uh, for guitar and I used the system. So let's see if you can see that, you know, there's any problems. I don't know. Obviously, if you ask me, in context, what do you know? Is it is it as good as a cable? Is it as good or bad as another wireless system? Realistically, in context, uh, it worked. And that's the whole idea. Uh, you're playing in some uh, bar, some little club. You don't want to have a cable. You don't want to run and, and, and get entangled on stage with someone else. You just want a little bit of freedom. That's what a system like this is for. So, uh... Let's see what's in the box. We'll do that. Overall, nice packaging, very simple. You got the transmitter and receiver which clip together and then you have this uh, and there's a little bit of rubber which is nice and uh, uh, that also is uh, then if it goes on your guitar it protects it if it actually hits it and there's this dual USB cable you can charge both of them at the same time. That's it. Uh, they are very plasticky obviously it's a very inexpensive system. Um, that, that, that's, that's how that works. So let's go through a couple of the stats before we do some more tests and then look at the results. So the stats are um, 2 gigahertz broadcast. So it's a wire, it, it's a, it's a wire, it's a digital system, meaning it gets converted into digital, then transmitted and then back to analog. Uh, the transmission happens at 2.4 gigahertz. It says uh, it gets out of the uh, range of TVs and blah, blah, blah. However, in the instructions, it says keep the receiver at least three, four meters away from like a wireless router and any other 2.4 gigahertz stuff, which, okay, that might be a problem depending on where you are. If you're using it in the living room, um, nowadays on stages, we have wireless stuff going on. We have Wi-Fi going on because of digital stage boxes, people setting up their in-ears with uh, iPads and stuff like this. So there is other stuff transmitting in that range and they know it and they warn you about it. Okay. 32-bit audio. That's great. 32-bit means highest dynamic range and billions, I think, of uh, different uh, uh, loudness points. Um, 44.1, uh, which is fine for guitar. Absolutely, guitar doesn't have that much treble. And um, it, it doesn't, not with 12-inch speakers. So that's great. Fast charge, uh, it charges fast. It doesn't say how fast. And um, up to seven hours of continued use, uh, up to 20 hours overall. I don't know how these two numbers play together, but seven hours is quite fine. 
four channels. So you simply click one, two, and then one, two, and there's little lights on the side, and you then can see what channel you're on. See, green light, and then you click, and it just goes through the four channels, and that's it. And then um, smart design. Well, that's up to you to decide and up for me to decide. It does fit into a Strat. It goes onto a Les Paul and then kind of like clips away to the side of the guitar, which is nice. I don't want that thing sticking out. I like it kind of leaning against the guitar. So there's a couple of things we need to test. We need to test range, which is actually why New X hired me. New X Nux. I don't know how to say this. Someone please tell me. Um... Why they hired me? They, because I've done these uh, range tests with my electric unicycle for, I think, the THR, the Yamaha THR, and also for uh, the Sennheiser uh, pedal board wireless system from the XSW, which is very good, but also, I think, four times as expensive. And they said, yeah, we want you to ride your electric unicycle with a guitar, do that. Okay, special job. I did the special job out in the field with my little team of helpers. Let's check out what happened. So we are here now with the wind in the mic and my trusty oopsie Harley Benton signature with, uh, I hope this strap holds, and we've got the Nox B2 Plus on it. As always is also, what I wanted to say is the other B2 Plus is in the Yamaha THR 30 on the ground right there, and we have signal. And I'm very cool standing in the field. You might hear the drone, which is being manned by my brother right over there. We couldn't see that. Do that again, please. No, no, just take, keep your pants on. <laughs> so hopefully we get some good shots. He's a newbie to the drone. Hopefully it will survive the shot. Now I will, attempt to go down this road to see what the distance will be and that rhymed and off we go distance is really poor, but what I didn't consider is that about three meters away from the receiver is standing a guy with a very, very powerful remote. So guy with a remote, piss off. Because it's really not a fair test, because at your gig, you don't have my brother with a drone remote. So we're going to see, I'm getting the finger, we're going to see if that changes it any. Uh, see you in a bit. Don't, don't look at my butt. Okay, so what we're going to have to do is uh, test it against the built-in wireless in the THR30 because now I'm really curious. We're going to do that and then we're going to turn off the drone because maybe that has something to do with it, maybe not. Leslie, could you hand me the Line 6 wireless, please? Here we got the Relay G10. And I think the way this works, you just plug that in and then it technically works with the THR30. Let's find out. Let's see if that's any better. 
So now uh, we, uh, well, we retired the drone because maybe the remote is an issue. It's obviously at a gig, a drone remote isn't going to be... An well, actually... Actually, yes. Actually, yes. If you're playing outside and someone flying a drone to get some cool... Yeah, yeah, my brother has a good point. It could be an issue. No, there's the, the people throwing around their drones everywhere. Drones everywhere. <laughs> um, I'm going to do this again without the drone. <laughs> Considerably better. Good? That's the question. I feel... I mean, I feel latency, but that's also the distance of audio. When I'm further away, obviously, I hear it delayed. So... Like 80 meters, 100 meters? So definitely a range that you don't need. But if you're going to an outdoor festival, any kind of drone is going to kill your distance, so stay in the vicinity of your amp. Uh, that's what we find out here. We also found out that it's not really uh, superior or inferior to the Line 6 version, which is more expensive. Um, I think anything else we're going to cover at home after I've looked at this footage. Uh, see you there. So the range test, as long as the drone and its remote and receiver was around and flying, wasn't very satisfying. A 20 to 30 meter range technically actually is more than fine for a product like this, because where are you going to use it? But overall, it should have more range just to be safe. Uh, but the remote of the drone is very strong. And where are you going to have a drone like that? You will have a drone like this possibly at a outdoor open air live gig. And my recommendation then simply is do not use a system for 110 bucks. I found those for under 110, over 110, let's say 110 overall, roughly. You wouldn't. You wouldn't go on a big stage in Wacken and play this. If you play on a big stage in Wacken, you will very likely uh, use a G4 system, I think, or what are they they're called, from Sennheiser. Um, the, those systems range between 1,000 and 2,000 euro. That's what you will use. You will not use an entry-level little digital wireless. Simply not going to happen. So if you know there's going to be drones around, don't buy the new X. Don't. It doesn't. It Well, how big is the stage? Because if you're going to be around your amp, roughly you're going to be 5 to 10 meters around your amp. Then you could even do that with the drone around because there was no problem once that was close. However, once we landed the drone, turned everything off, the range was very far. It was probably a good 80 meters. Oh, do that times three in feet, which is 240 feet. That's far. You'll never need that range if you're using the system. If you need that range stably, again, you're going to use a much more expensive system. We're going to use this. You're going to use this on the couch, which makes sense. That's why I would use it because playing guitar on the couch is annoying with a cable. I would use this on the couch, have the amp in the corner, 
and you're good. In the studio, no, if you're actually doing serious recording, you'd never ever, why in the world would you use a digital wireless? Use a freaking cable. Because tone matters. Because this will not sound like a cable. Oh, very likely not. We're going to do that test right now. So, for convenience, in the practice room, with your band, not to in get shit entangled, to make your practice easier, and to move around, if you're the band leader, move to the keyboarder, move to the vocalist, you know, just give you some more freedom. You're going to use this. And if it works in the practice room, it will likely work in the live situation, in the small club or bar or wherever you're playing. And you're going to use it on the couch. If you're going to a recording studio like this one, could you use it like I did on the track? Yes, you could. Should you use it? No, use a freaking cable and use a good one. Use a cable in this price range because cables do matter. So we're going to check out what this sounds like versus a good cable directly into the amp. We're going to do that right now. So here we got the new X B2 Plus. As you can see, I mean, it's, it's not unobtrusive, but doesn't really bother you. So and I'm going into the Morgan MVP66 right there directly with the new X. Let's listen to sounds without playing. Okay. And now, cable. I'm going to say that's about a 10-foot cable. say with imagination that it's slightly different. A little bit less low end maybe, a little bit more sparkle, I mean, it's, it's dynamics. <laughs> latency I got no problem with, I don't feel that at all. There is latency, there has to be latency, meaning the delay from when you hit to when it hits the amp, because it's a it's a digital system, but it's so low uh, that you wouldn't you wouldn't care. Not in the, in the situations where you would use that. Um, and tonally, when you're on the couch practicing, the difference doesn't matter. In the blues club or little jazz cafe, when well, the jazz cafe you wouldn't move, so you can use a cable. Um, nah, I don't think it. And it's. It's a, more of an imagined, I think it has to be different because it's a wireless system than an actual difference that matters. Now, the thing that uh, matters to me a lot is how does it go through walls? Because in your situation, that might actually be something that's relevant. And uh, when I tested the Pod Go wireless the other day, I was actually impressed that it was in here and I could go into the kitchen and into that room right there, because this is actually the outside wall of the old house right there. That's a thick ass outside wall. And um, with all the insulation we have here, nothing really penetrates these walls. I said penetrate. Even the Sennheiser AVX system, which is a good wireless mic system, which is about a thousand bucks, I can barely go into the kitchen if I have the receiver here and it works. So if it can do that, I'm going to give it a big thumbs up. If not, I'm going to give it a medium thumbs up. Okay, let's find out. So, I'm mad with the camera. Let's see.
So I couldn't hear everything while I was walking around, uh, but because it was actually rather far away, all the way through the stairwell up into the living room, and there's a concrete slab this thick in between. And I know that the Sennheiser G4 system can bridge that. I would have never thought that this will do it. So I'm going to listen to the audio, but from what I can see, I don't see major dropouts. I, I don't know. Uh, but if that survived it and you already heard it, then holy crap. Uh, it definitely had sound. I could hear that, uh, whether it was crackly sound or not. That was the interesting thing um, on the unicycle. This lost connection, but then kind of stuttered and was garbagey when it wasn't receiving well. The Line 6 completely dropped out immediately. So the Line 6 has a threshold. I either get my full signal or I don't. And if I don't, I'm gone. This will give you a stuttery kind of garbage signal if it doesn't have enough reception. So it doesn't have a threshold of I need at least that much reception, which might be a good idea to implement like the Line 6. However, even that isn't a fair comparison because the Line 6 Relay G10, which is the cheapest of the Line 6 systems, I think the transmitter alone, only one of these, is 150 euro. So 110 bucks, if you want a wireless system and not spend a shit ton, that's the way to go. Nuex is the company that kind of started these inexpensive little digital wirelesses. There is a Harley Benton system, which I think is similar to the B2, but not the B2 Plus. That's the Plus version, which is better. Better how? I don't know. I can't figure it out. But it is better, um, it most certainly based on my findings here in the house. Just don't use it with the drone. Um, there are systems from X5. There are systems from, again, the Harley Benton. And then there's the Line 6. Boss now has a system. The Boss and the, uh, uh, the Line 6 name brands, but also quite a bit more expensive. Uh, then you can step it up to the Sennheiser XSWD. Uh, that's what it's called, XSW-D. But they are considerably more. They're good, but they're considerably more. And realistically, 110 bucks. For the plus, it's not bad. And where you're going to use it, where, for someone who will buy a system for only 110 bucks isn't expecting it to be a pro system for the big stages where drones are flying in many, many in-ear wireless iPads are flying around and all that stuff. Um, I'm going to say for where you're going to use it, practice room, small gig, and on the couch, I would, I will, not I would, I will absolutely use that. Even recording the track that you saw at the beginning in here, just moving around without the cable was convenient. And uh, any kind of tone loss that I imagine doesn't matter in the context when you're recording five guitars on top of each other. I'm so, I, I know I shouldn't say that, but it, that's what I believe in. Uh, so I don't think this is a bad system. I don't think it's a, oh my God, I can't believe how good the system is because it's an entry-level system for entry-level money, and it delivers on that front. 110 bucks, way to go. Uh, and as I said, new X Nux, whatever they're called, they commissioned this video, and uh, yet I still showed you the stuff that doesn't work. So you figure out how honest I am. <laughs> I, would, I would say quite a bit, but that's up to you. Ah, but I have to tell you that I get paid. So thank you, and uh, we're going to put some animals at the end and links below this video if you want to buy it somewhere if I find it I'll, I'll put whatever links are applicable below please use them that also helps me thanks guys bye bye and you won't surrender to the blind lead